Welcome, adventurers. Why is it hot in here? I guess that's what it feels like getting hit with Shakara's fire breath. Or maybe it's because March Madness is heating up. Let's keep the party rolling with what happened last time on the Incorrigible Party. Shaft, Shakara, and Keck find Allstaff Tinnerman's shop, where Shaft learns that Isabella Good has come to Heracleon and is seemingly in league with the paladins of Coltis. The Dragonborn and Aarakocra have their own private conversation with each other, Keck expressing concerns over the danger that Falzern poses to Shakara and all of Aspara. Confirming what she has already suspected for some time, Shakara is unsurprised to hear that Falzern did not, for the second time, make contact with the Tritons. This leads to a confrontation about the wizard's true intent, resulting in Kek sharing her goggles with Shakara. Donning the magical eyewear, they show Falzrin to be a deep scion. With a yell, Shakara blasts the magic user with her breath weapon. And now the adventure continues. Oof, Falzrin, could you make a dexterity saving throw, please? Mia is just like panting, just like, please don't let this be true, because she, she would just be shattered by this. Ugh, she would have to do something if he was trying to tear apart Aspara. I'm shaking right now. <laughs> I mean, Elena called that he was a deep sign a long time ago. <laughs> I knew you're, I knew, I can't believe it took this long for you to say that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a 17 on my deck saving. I knew it! <laughs> so does he take half damage or no damage? I believe he takes half. All right. I rolled 14, so you would take seven. The moment Shakara uh, releases her fire breath, I want to like let my hand slip to my dagger to hold it close. I uh, I am going to ring of the ram Shakara. <laughs> I don't I don't know I don't know what the hell is going on here, but I know falls are in much better than I know her, so. Um, at this point, she's trying to kill him. So that's a Does 19. Not fit. So I uh, expel a charge. Yeah, the Spectre Ram blasts out from your fists, and Shakara, in her heavy arm or her, her armor, able to get her sh- shield up and brunt the force of this this spectral attempt at hurting her. Can I yell at at uh, Shakara when uh, Chef attacks? Like, show him. I know from all the research that I did that I can't find out if he's a deep scion in any way, right? We didn't find anything out. All you know, all you know, all you read was that they would revert back to their deep scion form upon death. That is it. I'm going to run and put myself between Shakara and Falzern and and shout, you guys, stop. He is a deep scion. And I'll tear off the goggles and I'll hand them to you, to Mia. Look. Look at him! Yeah, I'll put the goggles on and I will look at Falzern. What do I see? What are those infernal goggles? Let me see them. No! Mia, as you slip them on, again, the rest, everyone here except Falzern appears normal once they're on. Falzern looks like a deep scion. It's long tentacles coming out of the back of his head with thin, spiraling fins coming from his forearms. I, I, I look at Mia, I go... What do you see? Falzerin looks like a deep scion, but can't our eyes deceive us? What if this is some type of spell or charm? Yeah, exactly. You got the glasses from you. And I look over the keck. I go, uh, we really don't know you too well, and I've seen a lot of things. These glasses could be real. Or they could be showing us what she wants you to see. How can we find out which is the truth? Well, try them yourself and see what happens. Like, just, 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 just look, just look. I I hold my hand out. For what reason would Kek try to... I hand him the goggles. And I look at Falzren. You also see that he, immediately his image becomes that of a deep scion. What, What do you see, Shaft? Why would she like? try to deceive us? I don't know, but I just met her this morning. I, I've known him a long time. A long time, meaning weeks, 
years? A lot longer than I've known you. And I throw the glasses over to to Falzern. Can I try to catch them? If you want to try to snag them out of the air, Keck, yeah. for sure, you can make a sleight of hand, Jack. Natural 20! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> All right, so you're able to sta- you're able to snatch them out of the air before they reach Falls Room. I want to look at Keck and I want to cast Dispel Magic. Okay, so does Dispel Magic is it range? Do you have to be holding it or is it ranged? Range within 120 feet, and I just have to choose a creature, object, or magical effect. So I'll use the goggles. Although, did she grab them? She grabbed them. She has them in her hand. Yes. So you can still you can still target them though. I want to target the goggles, yeah. Hoping, hoping we can get them back. You successfully cast, and you've dispelled the magic on these goggles. And Keck, you have them in your hand now, and you've seen Mia use her somatic and verbal components needed to cast it, and you now hold a regular pair of goggles in your hand. What did you do? Mia. Why? Why would you do that? That may have been our only chance to find Deep Scions. Well, Shakara, I hate to break it to you, but I am not a Deep Scion, so whatever those goggles are showing is false. Like I'm going to trust you. I don't expect you to trust me, but I don't know this Keck person apart from seeing her show up on my doorstep this morning. And now, very coincidentally, she has goggles that supposedly can show Deep Scions. What are the odds? Which is exactly what a deep scion would say. Shakara, I ended a spell cast on those goggles. Someone with ill intent cast a spell on those goggles. I'm fairly certain. Cast a spell on the goggles to allow us to uncover deep scions, which you have just ruined. Not only deep science, but a, a person's true nature. So thanks. The, just thanks a lot, not... How did you come across these goggles, Keck? How, how do you? Why do you care? I mean, you're you're such a. Uh. Can I do another insight on Keck? Sure. I would like to as well. I'm very suspicious of her. Yeah. Anyone that wants insight, go ahead, Keck. You can do a contested roll. Seventeen. Eight. It's a thirteen for Falzern. It's gonna be thirty. Thirty. What? <laughs> that can't be. You're a deep sigh. Both Mia and Falzerin, you, yeah, Keck is very clearly annoyed that you've ruined this item of hers. Okay, so I'll look at Shakara for a second. I'll, I'll hold my hands up and I'll go, all right, we can play this out a number of different ways. We we don't need to kill each other over this. Falzerin, we're going to talk about this a little while and let's go back to your place and we'll... We'll, we'll, we'll work through this. But don't try anything shifty. I think it's in your best interest to probably Shaft, just keep quiet. I don't know if we should go back to Falzern's apartment. Obviously, someone knows where to find him there. No offense, Keck, but I don't think you were looking for your other friend this morning. Well, I was drunk. I don't know where I showed up. You guys, trust me. I, I'm i wise beyond my years. We need to go somewhere else where we can't be found. I've got an idea. I don't trust you. I do not you. trust you either. I don't think you can say anything, Falzern. Shakira, what do you want us to do? Do you want me to kill him? I don't think you want me no. to do that. Do you want to lock him up? I don't think we can trust anybody here that they're not all deep side. Agreed. What do you want to do well, with Mia, him? do you not have magical ability that can force someone to tell the truth? Sort of. Maybe. Depends. Well, have at it. I've got nothing to hide. <laughs> Hit me with it! <laughs> Until Leland DMs you some details that you didn't know. Um, I've taken copious notes, don't worry. Are you saying I should ask you questions, Falzerin, or should I ask Keck? I I don't know. It, I'm not overly familiar with, with this ability that you have. You know better than me how it works. If you ask him a question, does he have to tell the, the truth? The zone of truth, It's a. it's a area so any creature in it are is affected by the zone any creature in a 15 foot radius sphere okay so it's a 30 foot diameter yes it's a large circle so you could 
cast it on all f- all five of you could be in this. Let's do this. Let's not do this right in front of the library. Let us retire to one of the taverns in this city and rent a room. Okay. I think we need to be somewhere private. I agree, Shakara. Okay. Off to the creepy aura. <laughs> okay. It's a neutral location. So, again, uh, this, I imagine, very tense and quiet, the silence in which you could cut with a rapier as you walk from the middle of the of Heracleon back down to the port once again for the second time this day. I'll be right behind Falzerin. Yes, and any effects from the alcohol, I'm sure both Shakara and Shaft and Keck are all quite sobered up after the events. And you arrive back to the Creepy Aura and half greets you once again. Oh, back so soon, eh? Yeah, half. Thanks. Uh, can we take that round table over there in the corner? Is this a inn also? Can't we rent a room? You, you There's rooms for rent. You could certainly get some rooms. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. We'd, we'd like to rent a room. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no problem. Just a, a gold piece, eh? All right. I flip him a gold piece. And that bottle there. And I ask him for uh, number four. <laughs> <laughs> Compliments at the house, eh? Oh, thanks. All right. And then we go to okay. the room. Okay. I go in. I sit down on the edge of the bed. I pop the top off the bottle. I take a swig. Sort of... Offer it to everybody else. No. Mia refuses. I need my wits right Same. now. Refuse. I'm, I appreciate it, but I'm not in the mood shaft. All right, what's this? Uh, what's this zone of truth? I mean, are you sure you guys want me to cast it? It's it's a pretty powerful spell. Let me ask you this, Shakar. If, if he says he's not a deep scion after this spell, are you gonna Is believe this him? Spell foolproof. Can he not still lie? I mean, that's what I'm. That, once you're in my area, I mean, if you have high enough charisma, you can you can kind of tell the truth without... You're not really lying, but you're not really telling the truth either. I will speak plain language, and I look over to Keck, and I expect you to as well. Someone that has fooled you for months, mayhap still may fool you in the spell. So the Zona Churso Works is uh, an affected creature with, if you all agree to be affected, we will, won't bother doing the throws. Because Mia would know whether or not a, a creature was passed or saved the throw. So once you're affected, basically, you can't tell a blatant lie. You can't. Yeah, you cannot deliberately tell a lie, but you can be evasive and avoid the question. You're not compelled to deal the truth, but you cannot lie. Do you guys all agree that if I cast this spell... You'll tell the truth, and you're willing. Absolutely, I, I'm ready to be to be done with this. Falzern is willing. So am I. Who else is willing? He's too willing. He's hiding Keck something. Keck is not willing. That that is not what she said. We'll see who's hiding something. Let's do this. I'm not hiding something. I want to hear that you are all are willing before I cast this spell. I think the only two people we need to worry about here are Falzern and Keck. We are Agreed. willing. I'm willing. Does that mean you're a willing Shaft or not? I'm, it's not, this is not about me. This is about him. I want Shaft to roll a charisma saving throw then, since he's not agreeing. Okay, so anyone that is not fully agreeing to be affected by the spell can make their charisma saving throw to not be affected by it. But those that are willful participants in submitting to its effects do not need to. So, Mia, boom, you throw up the zone. Who's going to roll a, a saving throw to avoid being detected? So keep in mind that... The ca- and I, not, I don't know if Mia would have explained that, but the Mia will know who passes and who fails, the ones that yeah. do it. Yeah, oh, so. okay. Falzern's not going to. Shakar is not going to. I'm not going to either. Yep, I didn't agree. Well, what's your save there, Shaft? Which one am Charisma. I rolling? Charisma, straight charisma? 15. It's Well, it's a saving throw, right? Do, does my aura still affect them? I uh, yeah, suppose it would, yes. <laughs> oh, crap. Shakar. Oh, I, I radiate an aura 10 feet away if he's within 10 feet of me. Shaft saves. And Mia knows that. Keck. I also didn't want to, and I rolled a 14, but with the plus four. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay, so Mia, you, you are aware that both Keck and Shaft have passed and are not affected by your zone of truth. You guys, 
just so you know, in this little powwow, the spell I just cast, Falzerin is under the influence of the spell and cannot lie, okay, Shikara? But Shaft and Keck can evade my questions or lie. They are not affected by the spell. I've got nothing to defend myself for. Sha- uh, I, I just... Falzerin, are you a deep scion? I'm not a deep scion. Are you in league with the Kraken? I am not in league with the Kraken. Are you in league with the cultists? I am not in league with the cultists. Are you trying to harm Aspara? I am not trying to harm Aspara. Keck? What do you say to this? Mia wants to do another insight on Keck with her reaction. <laughs> okay, well, let Keck respond. <laughs> well, okay, respond. <laughs> Good enough, right? I am not appeased yet. I mean, those answers don't it's still. I, I no, I don't trust him. Sorry. I, no. I cannot lie. I don't know what power you have. You are dangerous. You can have whatever. I don't know. You're just too powerful, and I don't trust you. What about Erica? What about Erica? What do you have to do with her and Isabella? We killed Erica. Falzerin, you said that you met Isabella in Zexa? Yes, I did. Zexa is a community I have visited before. They are not very trusting of outsiders, correct? That was my experience as well. When I visited Zexa, it was within the past year, Isabella did not live there. She was not a doctor or part of that community. Well, this was in the recent... This was only a, a mere couple weeks ago, so... Yeah, but why was Isabella trusted in that community that's so afraid of outsiders? Shaft, can you roll a history check, please? 13. Do you immediately recall in your private conversation when you went and spent that night at Isabella's clinic that... She had said that she'd been there for nearly a dozen years. Okay. I'm just going to listen in for a minute. I don't have a good answer for you, uh, Mia. All I know is what I observed in the short amount of time I was in Zexa. I don't think you're a deep scion. Obviously, you can't lie in my zone of truth right now, but I don't think that you realize who you're messing with. I do understand where you're coming from, Keck. He's very powerful. But I also don't know you from anyone else. You're very much a stranger to me. As you are to, uh, to us. We have not known you all that long either. No, but I hope that I can earn your trust. Obviously that takes time, but I am here to protect Aspara. I'm good. So are we. Uh, okay. I think we're done here, right, Keck? We'll see you tonight at the party. Okay? I refuse to leave. I'm not sure what else I can say to appease your suspicions. I do not have the ability to, nor did I try, to overcome this power of Mia's, the power of Mia's spell. When she cast her spell, would I have felt something? Because you're under it. Yes, you know you are affected by it. Okay, so it's not like I could say, accuse her of not actually casting the spell. Even even those affected by it, that failed their save, do know they are affected by it. So yes, you do know you are affected okay. by this. And uh, keep in mind, you got 10 minutes to ask any of those affected by a question. I know. That's the thing. Shakara says she doesn't trust me. She could ask me anything. Where did you get the information that I was a deep scion from? Was it only the goggles or something else? I was given a vision by a higher power. What, Which higher power? What is this higher power? That is something I am not ready to disclose yet. I feel like you're not allowed to evade my question. <laughs> that is an honest answer. Yeah, she's not lying. She's just not answering. The spell text does say that the affected creature can avoid answering... Um, yeah, avoid answering questions to which it would normally respond with a lie. Well, it sounds sounds like your higher power is not telling you the truth, because he's not a deep scion, as we can plainly see. That does not mean he is good. We're not really defending That's whether irrelevant. Falzern is good right now. We are defending whether those goggles deceived us. He is not a deep scion. There's one way to find out. Let's just... <laughs> Yeah. Chop his head off. <laughs> no. 
She has a point. We could kill him and you could bring him back if he is not a deep scion. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Cap, okay, I, I, I pull my rapier out. I go, I think we're done here. So, uh, I think you there need to move no along. There is here. Mia could revive him. I could revive him. I truly could. But I don't want to. I don't want to do this. So, Shakira, you're you're asking, Shakara, you're asking to kill Falzrin here to see if he's a deep scion or not. It was merely not. a suggestion. Something's extremely strange about you. In the brief time that I've known you, this is not something that you would say. This does not seem very honorable of a request, Shakara. I would not make it if I did, was not sure of your ability to bring him back. But what about the pain and suffering that I would go through if, especially if you were to find out that I'm not a deep scion and you subject this to a good person with good intent? That is where the issue lies, is it not? It is. And I think I've provided ample evidence to support the fact that I have no ill intent and I'm not a deep scion. Have I had to make some difficult decisions? Yes. Am I seeking to destroy Aspara? No. Shakara, in your vision, how was Falzarin hurting Aspara? What is he doing? What's what's the main concern, specifically? He is working with the Kraken. How could he be working with the Kraken? I assure you, I have no connection to the Kraken that I am aware of. Could I perhaps have an association with a friend or an accomplice who unbeknownst to me is associated with the Kraken? I do not know and I, I cannot tell you for certain, but I can tell you that I am not aware of anything more to do with this Kraken than Shaft or any of you are. You are not aware. That does not ease my mind. Well, he doesn't lie. Let's try to figure this all out together then. Agreed? Maybe it's Isabella. Maybe she has something to no. do with it. If, if, if we have these concerns, let's figure out why this is happening. Let's not go kill each other right now. But it is on the table, and I look over at Keck. I mean, Mia's thought about killing No Keck. one is harming Keck. <laughs> and I'll stand in front of her, in between her and you guys. That's what I said. We don't need to kill each other. Falzrin, do you have any intention of stopping Krelakina at all? Absolutely. I... I'm... I come from... I call this place home, this island, and it's probably the most vulnerable to a massive sea beast such as this. I would not stand idly by and have my home destroyed by it. And who knows what else it intends to do to the world of Aspara. Th this is where I've spent my whole life. If it's within my power to kill this Kraken, I will. Falzerin, can you make a persuasion check with advantage, please? That's a 22. So Kek, knowing again, like Mia has rec uh, reminded you that under the effects of this spell and just the, you can clearly hear the sincerity and Falzern's voice that you you seem ex incredibly confused by this as everything that you have been told is of course contrary to what Falzern is saying and it may be making you second guess a few things yourself I'm gonna turn to Kek and whisper could we mi misread Dendar's message I don't know what's happening anymore and I lay down on the bed and then just stare into the to the ceiling like what am I doing here all three of us Shakara, myself and Falzerin looking at Shaft kind of like not sure why he resisted my spell you know but like we can truly say we're we're trying to save Aspara I'm looking at, at Keck with this but I, I don't know what to believe anymore I, I've been told so many things and if they're not true then I don't know what to believe anymore. It just, it's so confusing. Keck, who gave you those goggles? Where did you get them? I, I cannot, I cannot tell you that. 
I think that you should really question where you got those goggles from. I'm sorry they're no longer rainbow magic. Yeah, uh, what a way to rain on my parade. <laughs> I'm going to get up and... <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> I'm going to get up in Falzerin's face, and I'm not. I'm going to put my hands down, just kind of look him right in the eyes. Terrible breath, my goodness. <laughs> This is where I, I, I shake my head and go, this is not helping. If we're playing in real time, the 10 minutes is up, by the way. For the zone of truth. <laughs> That's very true. I know you believe what you have said. I am questioning now what I have learned and what I have done. But I still will be keeping an eye on you. Shakara... I respect your right to do that, and I would expect nothing less of someone who has keen intellect like yourself, but I assure you, I am not out to harm you, and I am not out to harm anyone else who seeks to do good in this world. And before Falzern gives you that response, the effects of Mia's zone of truth do end, and what he says, not quite captured by the effects of the spell. I have much to think on. And I'm going to leave the room. I put my rapier away and go, I think it's about party time, right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go party. <laughs> I could use a party. Oh, I man. certainly could use a stiff drink right about now. <laughs> I want to follow Shikara because I don't know what's going on anymore. I don't know whether to believe that Emma doesn't actually know or she like, That deep scion magic can't can't be zone of truth. Are those dispel magic like last Did you hear forever? what he just said? Did you hear what, what he just said? What are you doing? Wait, Bill? what did he say? Sorry. <laughs> did you hear? <laughs> what did he say? Don't worry about it. Deep scion magic. Deep scion magic. Ah, oh, yeah, man. <laughs> I'm like, it kills me to play such a good character, but I have to believe he's telling the truth. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, so hard. I want to be Bryn right now. I want to steal the goggles. I want, you know what I mean? But stab it. Oh, they're useless now. I know. Does this, that's what I was going to ask. Does the spell magic like forever? They're useless. Yeah, you've destroyed oh, wow. the magic that was within. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I didn't really my realize whole life. That. I know. I thought it was like just for a minute. Okay. Yeah. So Shakara and Kek, you storm out of this room. As Shaft did say, you could certainly start making your way back into Heraklion, because you do have to traverse really the entirety of the city to get to, as the the Elder's Keep is, like Falls are to mention, in the, north, the very topmost northwest section of the city itself. Is that where you are you again heading in very tentative and tense silence back through the city? Is there something that any of you would like to do before the party? Yeah, I want to whisper to Keck as we're walking. Do you have talks with her? No, uh, no, I didn't have talks. No. Did she send you this information in a vision? Yes. The, the, the vision showed me all the information about Falzrin destroying all of Aspara and just, I don't, I don't, I'm just, I cannot think straight anymore now. Nor I. She has helped me. She seemed good. Yeah, I mean, she helped me as well. I am confused. That's certainly my state as well. So we'll start walking. Uh, we'll be behind them, so we, of course we can't hear them. But I'll look up at Falls Run and I go, See, we should have just did the tower job. This is <laughs> What tower job? This has certainly spiraled out of control shaft. I, I don't know what to think. See, you try to do the right thing and it screws you every time. There's nothing wrong with trying to do the right thing, shaft. Yeah, not, and it, it is if it works out, but it almost never works out. I mean, all I was trying to do was to help you guys figure out what's going on. I don't... 
no, I I got your back. I I think you did the right thing, but you know now we're all in a in a hell of a mess. I don't know what else I could have done to prove that I have no ill intent. If Shakara refuses to accept that at face value, uh, I'm not sure what else can be done. Well, let's go to the party and see if uh, see if these elder guys have any insight into. Uh, this deep scion problem. Let them know about the Kraken, and then get our ass back to the Rising Star 3 and back to the mainland. Agreed? Yes. That sounds like a plan. Look at Mia. Sound like a plan? Mia looks back at Shaft, uh, remembering how he resisted her magic, but flashes a smile and says, Sounds like a plan. And moving through the city as the the sun is quickly beginning to set into the evening, you do see some other people. Uh, again, they're all clad in robes very similar to Falzerin's. Uh, as some of them do appear to be making their way to the Elder's Keep themselves. And as you kind of walk with them and amongst them, you do hear a bit of chatter of them... Uh, talking about, you know, wondering who exactly this special guest is. Uh, A few of them are really just looking forward to a break from some of their studies as well. They're very, they're not being coy about their conversations at all. You know, it seems they're, there's kind of a more of a friendly atmosphere on the road to the the keep here. Much more friendly than (laughs) what you've experienced in the last few (laughs) hours, that's for sure. Yeah. I'm exhausted. <laughs> While walking, I want to try to, like, keep looking through my glasses and like, take them off and just in utter, like, non-belief. Yeah, and every time you, you put them down over your eyes, again, kind of looking around you, you don't see any uh, any more, any sign of other people disguised, any deep science disguised in amongst the people that are, are walking around with you. And even kind of handling them yourself, like, you can... You can tell that something they don't feel the same, right? They just, there's just something innately that you understand that they don't they don't feel the same like they used to after Mia's dispel magic. I want to break them in half and throw them at their. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you get the... <laughs> oh my gosh. Make an attack roll. Broken pair of goggles thrown at you. <laughs> Should I? What, what, go what, ahead what? if you want to hit her with them. <laughs> yeah, I want to. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Not like full force, but just like, yeah. You can make a dex attack. 14. Yeah, they just hit my armor and just Yeah, like Mia's yeah. not really paying attention, but still, they just clatter against her breastplate and, you know, break into a more pieces in their already fragile state and just crumple to the, the ground around her and surprise Mia a little bit, but... <laughs> she just lets it fall to the ground. I look at Mia and go, see? <sighs> I just wish today could be over. <laughs> you arrive at the keep and kind of as this this queue is kind of forming right this line and you do see some of the people ahead of you they do appear to have some type of, of slip of parchment that they are handing to a, a robed figure at the door and Keck is just kind of rummaging in her in her pack and is able to produce her own as you get to finally the person taking admittance he grabs it from Keck ah Performer, eh? Uh, what about the rest of them? They're my my backup band. I don't wear their slips. Your your paper doesn't say anything about a backup band. Well, I I just acquired them, but the, um, I assure you, they'll make my act a lot more special. Why don't you roll a persuasion? Oof, 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 oof. That's ten. <laughs> <laughs> we don't look like we're oh, um, musicians. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can, don't. Can we assist her in smiling? Why, why don't you show him? Why don't you show him your dance moves? And then just... Okay, so okay, so all of us start like bopping back and forth, like dancing a little bit to try to sell it. Do we give her advantage then or something? Any, anybody that wants to try to help and do a little bob and weave can roll me a performance check and I'll take a collective. <laughs> can I roll performance as well? Sure, sure. My performance is 21. Mia is like moonwalking. Yeah, Falzern's performance is also 21. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Minus 19. Shaft's, Shaft's not going to do anything for a couple seconds and just look at this, what's going on. And then then I'll I'll look at the uh, the guy that's checking us out 
and sort of stare at him for a second like <laughs> I don't have much choice in the matter. And that is a 14. This car is doing a little dance and I got a 16. And Keck, you start strumming kind of thing? or What's your performance? Uh, like dance strumming. Just just uh, not a full performance because I don't want to give anything away too much. So it's a, it's a low-key gem. Okay. <laughs> and this guy, you know, he's seen a few a few troops already come through in, and he's, wow, I think you might be the best act in here. Well, get on <laughs> in there. The elders will be happy to have you. <laughs> As Mia moonwalks in ahead of everybody. <laughs> yeah, I'm like moonwalking. Does he give them a, a slip of their own? No, it was just, he takes yours and doesn't return it to you. So it's basically the admittance. So, Keck, you, basically there's kind of this split off point where the, you see some of the other performers going off backstage to actually go and do their job in which you could, you split off. And the rest of the party, well, is there any parting words between Shakara and Keck? I do want to pull her aside to, d- yeah, discuss what happened, kind of. So, I'm confused. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't n- actually know what happened. And, like like I said, I don't know if my information is correct anymore. I just don't know what to believe. What, what do you think? Mayhaps we misinterpreted Dendar's signs. The vision was true. We just don't know how to read it. So what would your suggestion be to do right now? I will keep a close eye on Falzerin and the others. And I think mayhaps we both shall try to contact Dendar ourselves for more clarity. I think that's a good idea. I have only recently learned of her. She only recently came to me. But... She promised to help. That's what confuses me the most, because to me, it's the helpfulness she provided. She, she saved my life, basically. She, she gifted me my abilities. She was the rock in the ocean for me. I don't... How could I... How could she mislead us like that? Could you both of you roll an insight check, please? Fifteen. You got a seven, Emma? Yeah. So Shakara, thinking on the the brief interaction that you have you have had from, from Dendar and, and the, the the three distinct images in which you were actually shown and kind of this this very cloak and dagger way that your your the offering of your power is manifested in this this box and these keys and having interact with Camel that perhaps something like this is maybe more of a test as opposed to advice. And your actions that you take according to what you see and how you interpret them certainly could could very possibly be a way in which Dendar is, is judging the two of you, quite frankly. Testing our loyalty kind of thing? Perhaps. Or, or, or testing the testing the boundaries in which Dendar could possibly trust either of you with. And maybe when I say that, I mean trusting the gravity of the task in which she imparts to both of you. Mayhap she is testing us. She is seeing... What we shall do with information given, whether we or not we would act on what she allows us to know. So that would mean we would have to act on something that we now know, if the spell worked as it's supposed to. Falzerin was telling the truth. Falzerin is good. Mayhaps... Dendar was testing our loyalty to see if we would trust her more than people we can see in front of us. Mayhaps she realizes she can give us more information now. 
but the vision showed me the dangerous side. So if to test my loyalty, I mean, I've been loyal to her for my basically all my life. If I would have to follow the vision, I would have to kill him. To protect Aspara, to protect everyone. And you as well. I mean, we don't know what powers he has that could change the way the spell worked, the true spell. That is true. I will make sure to stay close to him. If the need arises, if I see he has deceived us, I will not hesitate. But how could I now continue with my my life now that I don't know what to believe anymore? We can only wait for another sign. I will try to pray to her for more guidance. I suggest you do the same. I... yeah, I guess? It's... Uh, I'm just... I just... I, the the cat just, just doesn't know what to do anymore. It's just flabbergasted and just empty inside, like... Like a piece of her is now missing, like... An, like the biggest piece of your identity. I cannot heal this hole for you. But I assure you, I will not let you down. If the need arises and you need any help, then I'll be there. I appreciate that. And I'll give her a hug. Yay, hugs. Mia falls through the shaft, you continue into kind of this, this main hall right off the entrance. And you see Shakara quickly catching up to you as she and Keck part and Keck follows more of the instrument wielding performers, uh, very clearly performers, not just busting a jig outside and getting the entrance. <laughs> as they kind of move into more of a, like a bat, what looks like to lead to a backstage area kind of thing. And as you walk into this hall, you already hear music playing as some of the performers have already showed up and, and gotten on the stage. And it's quite a, a large hall. Falzerin certainly has been here as many, many meetings and, and dinners that is open, a semi-open invitation to those uh, welcome at least, certainly would have come here and this is where they would, they would hold it. As the Elders Keep is a very, very large structure. Falzerin knows, of course, that the elders themselves reside within the keep, but there are plenty of other rooms within the building itself, in addition to this great hall. But you see some uh, makeshift uh, tables set up with, with kind of elegant-looking silk uh, tablecloths thrown over them, and there's already many people seated at them, and they're drinking, and there's what looks like to be waiters and servants walking around with, with drink trays and... and very jubilant and kind of this chorus of, of, of conversation, you know, that, that monotone, can't quite make it out, but you can definitely this deafening roar kind of thing. You see the, the way far at the back of this, this ballroom, this hall, uh, seated at this additional long table are six figures, five of which being the elders of Heraklion, which of course Falzern recognizes. You see an elven female by the name of Geneva Vansk, with dark brown skin. She looks quite young, wearing a flowing set of red robes with blue accent stitching that matches a, a blue ribbon that she wears around her neck, it kind of tucks into, into her robes. Seated next to her is an older elf, male, by the name of Alamar Zelwick, you see, he, he's got this set of gnarled fingers. They're kind of clutching the, the head of this uh, wooden cane that's carved into this, this eagle. And he, again, dressed in robes much like Geneva. But his are a vibrant green with a black velvet trim at the cuffs and the collar. You'll see a tabaxi male named Gundar Baskop with uh, tabby coloring. He seems kind of disinterested in what's going on immediately around him. His eyes are very narrowed and what seems like a, a sleepy daze. Occasionally his ears twitch and 
faces forward as he slightly cocks his head towards whomever may be speaking. The Gundar does not wear robes. He simply has a, a pair of slate gray trousers with no no shirt. His light black striping continuing down his, his furry chest. Next to him is, is a human male by the name of Keek Sax. He wears a dark blue vest with small black flower pinned to it, resting over a, a pristine white tunic. And the last elder is a female human named Sybil Siblance, wearing a set of very thick glasses, gray and, and kind of frizzled hair, borderline unkempt. She's constantly fidgeting and, and fiddling with, with what looks like a, a wand, a, a dark black wand, possibly made of obsidian, just kind of twisting it and turning it into her hands and clutching it. And the sixth figure is, of course, the guest of honor, seated in the middle of this long table, elders flanking either side of her. She's quite portly and wears her own set of robes, a dark ashen gray with silver accents in the stitching it kind of even seems to sparkle in the torchlight in this ballroom and shaft and falls her and immediately recognize the guest of honor to be isabella good and that's a good place to wrap it up what we have different definitions what? of good places <laughs> to wrap things up isabella good so emma thank you so much for being on for a long time <laughs> Yes, okay. Emma, thank you. Yay. Thank you. Why don't you tell us exactly who you are and where people can find you and what you like to do? Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm still a flabbergast. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, you can find me at Emzaya uh, on Twitter and Instagram, and I do random stuff. And for more pointless stuff, you can find the Pointless Parrot podcast. Just search it, and it's just randomness in a podcast form basically <laughs> well thank you very much emma uh, that was perhaps one of the most intense guest npcs we've had on it so that was wonderful i almost broke down so <laughs> no, you, did it was intense. you did fantastic i came thank you. so close to stabbing you so many times <laughs> that's usually how it goes with npcs though <laughs> I mean, I still have to perform, so uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, true. You'll be back for your performance. No, that was that was awesome. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. We're sorry, Leland, uh, put you in that position. You know. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of my ID, oh. but. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emma wanted the the evil. Hot dog. <laughs> Wait, she's not evil. Fault, I mean, right. we, we're not in a yeah, zone of truth. Yeah, we have a pretty good so. idea of that. <laughs> <laughs> we're not in the zone of truth. Yeah. <laughs> we're not in the zone of truth, but... All right. Thank you very much again. Uh, maybe you'll return in the, in the future. Maybe. Who knows? And that's our show. Well, what a friggin' mess we are in now. Am I right? Now, don't tune out yet, listener. We've got the next pair of March Madness showdowns coming up at the end of this episode. I've personally got a lot riding on these matches, as I'm sure some of you do as well. And before you go, if you're enjoying our March Madness, drop in and say hi. We love hearing from folks who are enjoying the story. It's what keeps us going. We are Incorrigible Party on Twitter and Facebook, Incorrigible Par on Instagram. You can also check out IncorrigibleParty.com for world lore, list of all the NPCs that have ever been on the show, there's some wonderful maps of Aspar that John has put together, and there's plenty of IP merch for you to choose from. Why don't you sport some Incorrigible Party? The Incorrigible Party is made possible by the generous support of Critical Hit Design. You can visit criticalhitdesign.com. Our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. He can be contacted at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. All other ambient music and sounds are courtesy of Tabletop Audio. Take care, listener, and happy adventuring. It's time for our third set of March Madness bouts. In the western bracket, we have the con man extraordinaire. Could sell ice to a frost giant 
Sardo the Magician versus the Scary Witch on the Hill. On the outs with her coven, Sea Hag Erica! Sardo quickly approaches Erica. She has yet to reveal her true hag form. The magician has produced a cap of sultany. He's haggling with the hag! She's falling for it! I'm getting reports right from the arena that Erica has paid 20 gold for the cap. She's definitely losing on that deal. Sardo seems to be pushing his luck now. They're, they're bartering over a stick of finding. He's living up to his name, folks. Trying to charge one for the price of dose. And Erica goes for it! Sardo has landed two huge hits to Erica's coin purse. I don't know how much more she can take. It looks like Erica has donned the cap of Sultany now. I, I think she's trying to use the stick to find herself a win here, but it's clear the items are fake. She looks angry, folks. This could be bad for Sardo. Erica drops her magical disguise. She, she's caught Sardo in her terrifying gaze. He's, he's clutching his chest. He looks incredibly pale. Sardo has fallen over dead from fright. Erica's done it. I didn't think the old hag had it in her, but... No. How is this How is this possible? S Sardo, he's he's alive. I, I, I'm being corrected now. He's undead. Sardo is back on his feet now. He has a hold of Erica. He's, he's torn one of her arms clean off. A wound too grievous to withstand. Erica is down. And she ain't getting back up. We have our true winner, folks. Sardo the Revenant! Uh, these bouts can surprise even me. Our, our contenders, they're, they're fierce and determined. Onto our eastern bracket. We have the calm and hostile work environments. The man standing between you and the western gate. Rolling right! Versus... The boastest with the mostest. The infinite hero, Tolstov Melanin! Roland, he comes out strong. Landing across both Bolt and Tolstov's shoulder. Right wastes no time closing the gap. He's got Tolstov in a lock. Now he's smothering the infinite hero with a makeshift face mask. But Tolstov thrusts an elbow back, breaking Roland's hold. He's, he scrambles to his feet and he's... He's he's running away. Uh, Tolstov is actively running from his combatant. I'm not sure where this strategy is going, but he's certainly doing his best to maintain social distancing. Hold on. Tolstov has stopped. He's picked something up from the arena floor. It's Erica's arm! Tolstov begins savagely beating Roland with the hag arm. But he's quickly getting tired. I, I don't think he's experienced much physical exertion before, folks. Roland takes his opportunity in between swipes from Tolstov. He's, he does what he does best, relinquishing Tolstov of his weapon. Drives it into his chest. The now finite hero is defeated. Roland Wright takes the bracket! By Grapthar's hammer, these were some eccentric matchups. Stay tuned for the final bracket of the 8th Finals in our next episode.